Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and as my name implies, I am a nerd, and that's not only because I'm interested in guitars and gear. I am actually a trained Linux sysadmin, what do you know? And uh, yeah. So yeah, I like free software. Everything you've seen with me uh, has been edited and all of my videos have been done with using soft free software and in Linux. Uh, so uh, when you are using mobile solutions, well, there are two big things and they are the Apple world and then you have the Linux world or the Android world. And for Android users, there hasn't really been any options when it comes to playing guitar using your phone. And uh, so I was very happy and surprised when IK Multimedia launched uh, the iRig UA, the one that I'm demoing today or reviewing, uh, that's actually made for Android. Thank you, I came Multimedia, for a nice support of this video and for making it possible for me to review it. So it's the iRig UA, it's universal Android, and I can start already there. Because that would imply that this works with any Android device, and that's not true. Uh, you have to have a special version of Android, it has to be, I think, 4.2 or upwards. And your, your Android device has to have OTG support. And I have... <laughs> it's been a while since I got the gear and I haven't been able to find phones that actually work with it. Because I have two phones from 2015 and none of them have OTG support. But finally now I have one. Uh, so don't expect it to work and check this before you buy it. Uh, if your hardware actually supports this. There's a big difference between Apple products and Android uh, devices since Apple products like the iPhone or the iPad have built-in support for direct audio or real-time audio. And Android devices don't have that yet. Come on, fellow nerds, how hard can it be? A real-time kernel for the Android. And uh, so... Uh, the solution that iRig UA is using is that the box is basically doing all the work. This is a standalone uh, sound card basically, doing all the processing. No processing is done in the phone. The phone acts as a graphical interface, nothing else. And you also save your presets there and yeah, you do all the tweaking graphically on the phone. But everything happens within uh, the iRig device. Well, that's the limitations of Android, I suppose. And what you get, though, from this is that you have basically no latency at all. It's very fast. Since it's a standalone unit and it just has nothing else, it doesn't have to handle, you know, your calendar or your Wi-Fi or everything else that your phone is doing behind your audio processing. This is doing nothing but audio processing. So, well, it's a neat way of doing it. Uh, it's a very simple device. You just plug in your USB cable, you plug in your guitar and your headphone. And off you go. If you want to, you can even plug in an auxiliary in. So, you're... And that's an interesting thing as well. If you're using an Android device, you have to like go from the out the air earphone output of the Android device into the aux of this, because this is not a sound card for the phone. It's a standalone sound card. And good or bad? Well, <laughs> it's nothing else you can do about it. Uh, of course, it's a kind of a clumsy solution. When you're using the iRig UA, you're using uh, an app called Amplitube UA, so it's Amplitube Amps. Again, from IK Multimedia. And I have done a separate demo of uh, all the amps and all the effects of this one, so you can hear them here somewhere. You can click. You have four slots, like, yeah, four effects and amps. 
So you can have one amp and three effects. That's the most thing. But it has the limitations of, for instance, mobile pod in uh, the Apple world, that you can only place these in certain of these slots. So the first one is the only where place you can have like distortion overdrive, noise suppressor. The second one uh, and the third one is you can switch there and have the amp and the modulation effects uh, in either of these. And the last one is just time based, it's just reverb and delay. And that's very limiting, isn't it? And it's just four slots, so it's not super multi-effect you're gonna get of it. Um, yeah, you can hear for yourself. I think the amp sounds fine. I think the effects sound really good. And uh, sound-wise, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, what you lack, and I got a question from David on Facebook. And he's asking, aren't there any high gain sounds? And no, there aren't. Because the high gain amp that you get here, it's even called metal, I think. Yeah, it's called metal. Uh, it's, it's kind of a clean amp to me. So I will show you some presets, because that's a nice thing about this one. Uh, you can program presets. And then you can just switch between them. It's very convenient and in theory you could use this as a live application so you just switch presets within songs uh, so I've done some presets so I'm gonna show you them now to yeah give you some sounds and yeah the practical use of this app and device I'm gonna start with a clean sound with some chorus <laughs> So that's the clean amp, the fender amp, and the chorus pedal in front of it. And my second preset is the metal amp and the chorus after it. <laughs> So that's like a yeah standard rock sound. What's really good, I should mention this, uh, on the amps you have... Uh, that maybe makes it a multi-effect. Because if there are uh, an effect on the amp originally, like if you have a Fender amp in this one, you have a tremolo and reverb. Because that would usually something you would find on a Fender amp, an old Fender amp. So they are on the amp here as well. So you can have those effects from the amp. So you don't have to have a separate reverb because most of these amps have reverb on the amp. So that's a really good thing. I really like that. Okay, here's, uh, let's see what I have here. I have the high, the metal amp, uh, some overdrive, some cores and some delay. This is as much as you get from this. <laughs> And finally, I want to show you my metal sound, and you can hear it buzzing. The interesting thing is uh, the slot that you have for distortion, because you get a distortion pedal if you register your product. Um, is that that slot is the only place where you also can have a noise suppressor, so it's either... But what pedal would you use a noise suppressor in conjunction with? Well, probably a distortion one, so that's kind of strange to me. Well, here you have it. I'm using the metal amp and the distortion, so this is as much high gain as you get, basically. Trying to get that super metal high gain sound, David. Here we go. Yeah, 
And as you can hear, that was the metal amp and the distortion at with high gain, so it's not that super distorted, is it? That's my review of the iRig UA. And uh, again, thank you all big time to IK Multimedia. Uh, one last thing uh, I should mention is the price of it. Because in where I live, you can get two of these for the same price. Uh, Zoom G11, G1 on. And uh, this has five separate effects or amps in any order you want them. And uh, that's one of them. You can have two of these for the same price. Yeah, so it's up to you to decide. Do you think it's worth it? Uh, it's certainly portal portable. And that's uh, I, the big thing with it, I suppose. You can just bring it along. It weighs like nothing. It's just plastic casing. So, And it takes no space. And then you can rock out wherever you are. Yeah, I hope you found this useful. This has been the Swedish Katana reviewing the iRig UA. See you soon.